Many recent VR solutions target the consumer space. To be truly immersive, a VR experience should look great, react quickly to head motion, and permit users to move around freely. Tethered HMDs like the Rift or Vive support high fidelity graphics with low latency, but the users are chained with thick cables to the PCs and cannot move around. With untethered devices like the HoloLens or Gear VR, users can freely walk, but the on-device GPUs can only render simple scenes in real time. To enable higher fidelity, the graphics can be rendered on a server and sent over Wi-Fi. But network latency is typically high and server frame rates are often low. We present a new image-based rendering architecture that masks both problems and makes the graphics look smooth and responsive. The Outer Time system also uses image-based rendering to hide latency, but the rendering algorithm is simplistic and produces many visual artifacts. Our new algorithm is faster and higher quality and supports modern game graphics with intricate geometric detail. Yet it is fast enough to run in real time even on low-end mobile GPUs. Our method comprises new server and client-side algorithms. We will discuss the server first. In a simple IBR architecture, the server generates regular color and depth image pairs. However, this does not provide the client with enough information to handle disocclusions. Rotational client motion uncovers missing out-of-frame areas. This can be dealt with by increasing the field of view on the server. However, wide perspective projections can greatly reduce image center resolution. Cube maps don't have this problem, but they are slow to render and require more storage. We present a new nonlinear wide angle projection that can be directly rendered into. It distributes resolution exactly where it's needed, most in the center, and gradually less in the periphery. Translational motion causes a different kind of parallax induced disocclusion. Holes are revealed across the whole image. To fill these in, we generate an extra view at quarter resolution. We call the pair of primary view and extra view a dual view. The extra view content should not be redundant, so we use a depth peeling technique to scrape off any surfaces that are already stored in the primary view. This IBR sequence shows the effect of the different view representations. We start with a single view at the original field of view. Now we switch to our wide angle projection. Next, we activate the extra view. Finally, we enable the depth peeling. At the client, the view representation arrives via video stream with a delay and at a lower than target frame rate. It uses IBR to synthesize novel views from its current pose at a high frame rate. Most previous IBR methods required too many primitives to represent detailed geometry at high fidelity. This performs poorly on low-powered mobile GPUs. The performance can be improved by decimating the number of primitives, however, this has a degrading effect on visual quality. Our method uses a level of detail proxy that is dramatically simplified and fast, yet has reasonably accurate geometric detail. A pixel shader gathers and combines colors from the dual view representation. Naive geometric simplification causes some background samples to be drawn on foreground objects and vice versa. We use a depth test to remove erroneous background samples. However, this cannot recover foreground parts that are cut off by the simplification. To solve this problem, we generate a simplification that strictly encages the original geometry. This guarantees that no foreground samples will be removed. Now we can use the depth test to preserve all original silhouette details. Here are some results rendered with our full technique at 720p on an actual Intel compute stick. This comparison shows the result of rendering with a full game engine on a high-end desktop machine. If you run the game engine on the compute stick, we only achieve about one frame per second. Next, we show comparisons to various existing IBR methods. All results in the remainder of this video show the actual frame rate on this device. Global homography transformations are extremely fast but do not compensate for parallax. Early IBR techniques warp and splat independent pixels. This can cause small holes to form between splats, and rendering the large amount of primitives is slow. Grid meshes can fill the gaps between primitives, but it's just as slow to render them. They can also produce long and skinny rubber sheet triangles at depth discontinuities. The performance can be increased by decimating the mesh resolution, but that lowers the visual quality. Quad trees provide an adaptive way of decimating the number of primitives, but complex scenes still require a substantial number of subdivision. Iterative image warping gathers samples using an image space iterative search technique, but is generally noisy for large viewpoint changes. 
We show more extensive comparisons against these and other competing techniques in our supplementary material. Thank you for watching.